Yeah, Coming we are. Soon. All right, oh, hey, man. welcome back. Welcome Sorry back. about that. So, um, so Henry White was here, and he was really interested. Um, he's one of our like uh, backers that contributed a lot of money to the game. He was here for a design meeting, and he really wanted to talk about the system. He had a lot of ideas about like how it could work. Big fan of Crusader Kings two and other things. And uh, so, yeah. So, John, got you us wanting walk? to play more of that again. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is which is great. And then, um, and then it also happened to just be perfect timing too, because uh, Dan's been doing a lot of work on the random event system. Um, kind of made it the whole thing so we can kind of script these guys in Lua, and I needed to take a stab at scripting one up. And so uh, Henry and I sat down and kind of we had an example. Again, these are just super early examples, just to try to illustrate certain points and try to figure out how we can use the system. So in this one uh, called Riot Control, um, we're going to. Uh, do some checks against some of the, the hero stats, so you'll get actually different, you know, different chances of get, having different uh, success or failures based on hero stats. This is something we want to do. You need to read this. Though. All right. So riot control. <clears throat> My liege, we've received word of unrest in the lands of Stamos. Is that Stamos? Is that Stamos. Or? That is actually so that yeah, that's, that's John Stamos. That's pulling. Isa Stamos. Isa Stamos. Isa, oh, right. <laughs> that, I was that, thinking about that's the guy pulled from straight from house. your. That's pulled straight from your hero <laughs> retinue, right? Your house, your yeah. houses. That's one of your. That's one of your houses. The yeah, house Chad demos. entered yeah, in cool. all of the like double fine employees, uh, and uh, as we when we start the game now, it's just like generating random people pulled from that. This will be you guys though, backers. Um, it appears that the peasants are displis displeased with their rations. They claim the food is dry and tasteless, my liege. Wow, this the peasants. Uh, so you can have one of your heroes from that that house deal with it, or you can ignore them, and you know kind of test your luck. Uh, we should totally have so one of our heroes So we're going to send one of our heroes yeah. there. So it will pick the, uh, the he a hero from the Stamus house. So Melissa Stamus will volunteer. And Melissa can impress the locals with their strength or cl Ooh. calm the locals with a truly wise speech. So again, we're just like, we have um, these arrays of stats for the heroes that change throughout their lifetime based on their level. And because the characters right now have random <laughs> levels and random age, uh, some of them are going to have awesome strength, some are going to have awesome wisdom. And this is kind of, you know, going to like, we're gonna have a lot of events. We think where you're gonna like pick a, a hero and then kind of choose um, the path that you think they're gonna have a better chance to success with. And we're also testing here, like what is it like if we sh show you your chance to succeed? How does that feel? User Mexeter just said option three: cut their rations in half for three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Rule with an iron fist. <laughs> okay, so we will uh, we will impress the locals with our strength. Oh no. Uh. <laughs> It was a puny show of strength, oh. and they mobbed Melissa Stamos to death. To death. Wanna why? Not wearing this bad boy. <laughs> give you this drink. And that's, I mean, a lot of this, like, we have a, we have a huge array of things that we can actually, um, as, uh, of penalties and mm -hmm. rewards that we can put into the random event system. Right now, we There's only have, right like, now. <laughs> we can basically delete a hero is, like, our punishment, so... Yeah, that's yeah. that's about it. But, but there are lots imagine, of things. Like once all the systems are in there, we have a lot of like different rewards and um, uh, and punishments that we can put in there as randomized things that can come out. I have a quick question. Yes. Yeah. Was that sixty percent and fifty percent? Was that dynamically generated based on their stats? Yes, it was. It totally wow, was. cool. Good yeah. job, dude. That's so awesome. one of the cool things about the system, and I really appreciate Dan getting this in. Is we can put like um, in our dialogue database, we can put variables tags in there and then we can generate those in the script so the script there actually like takes the stat does some calculations on like how what, what would your chance be uh, to succeed based on on one of those I think I'm doing a D uh, like a D20 a D12 roll and the other one's a D10 roll and um, and then it uses that stat again when it determines if you su succeeded or failed so and my super, favorite part cool. is I didn't help you with that at all you did that all I can math own. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> no, I mean in terms of using the, the actual yeah. system. Yeah, oh, it's super flexible. I'm That's stoked awesome. about it. This was um, another one. Uh, Dan put this one in oh, just to kind of test the long-winded, <laughs> how much text can we get on the screen? And uh, he put so in this long. cool dynamic scroll bar. So we are going to be able to support, uh, you know, some of them are going to have a long body text. Some of them are going to have many choices. We're not going to, you know, throw a text wall at your face. But um, we can support it. Hey, John, here's a question, and I guess also for the engineers. Uh, Ivonit02 asks, will you be presented, this is apropos, will you be presented multiple missions at once like XCOM? Uh, 
or not? Wow. Multiple missions that's a good, at once. Like multiple yes. events? Multiple like demon attacks. Up. Yes, you will. Um, cool. Yeah, for the for the demon attacks, especially, like we want them to kind of start out like, I really like those abduction missions, is what they call them in the new XCOM, where... That's creepy, Brad. Uh, three, that's what they were called, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they were called. Uh, the abduction missions, where they like, um, they attack three areas at once, and you'd have to, you could only respond to one of them. Um, yeah, the core of the game in some ways is plate spinning. It's keep, keeping mm -hmm. all the plates spinning at once, making sure you're not going to lose a keep, and um, pressuring you to do the decisions that are going to be, you're going to maybe want to do, to take this one mission because it might be easier, or you get something great, um, or you might even just really want to see that art set because you haven't seen it yet, but maybe that'd be, yeah, that's going to be balanced against uh, needing to clear the corruption in a different region. Mm -hmm. And that's a big system that has not gone in yet, yeah. and we'll probably right. wait for a little while yeah, it's gonna be in right, terms right. of managing corruption in your kingdom. But we were just thinking that, like, um, at XCOM, the, the sort of triple attack, it kind of ping-pongs back oh, between sure. the, yeah, yeah, the triple yeah, attacks definitely. and the standard attacks. We really like the, the idea of it sort of ramping up over time, where it'd be only single attacks for the first, you know, mm -hmm. 50 years or whatever, and then it moves to, like, double attacks occasionally. Double kaiju and then, events. And then triple attacks, and then quadruple attacks. Basically, it's a way of like ultimately like overwhelming you throughout the, yeah, yeah. throughout the game. Mm -hmm. But um, we'll we'll try to make an impassioned speech about this dead bard. Hey, good see. Job. Look, everyone is so moved. Yeah, speeches are a, and the, a big element in this so far. Yeah, and that's and that's part of it is that we got to figure out like what you know what should the tone be? How how epic should those events feel? Because <clears> you're only you know we've been talking about how like oh those you know you should really get like maybe. We'll start with a mixture of about one to one from like events to missions. So if the missions are five years apart, like you're, you know, the events are going to be five years apart as well. So they need to be things that like, you know, it sort of needs to make sense. Day. Yeah, that don't happen every day and things that appeal. Like you know, if you as the mortal ruler, like you got to be a pretty busy guy, I guess, doing other stuff or. But I don't know. Can't because Frank kicked the can Sleeping. one day. Yeah, like the, but the problem thing, to make those events more massive though, like. There needs to be ramp up. It can't be, like, in my opinion, it's like, it can't be like all of a sudden, pestilence has come across the land. It's like, well, wait a second, we knew that pestilence was on its way. I mean, you don't just all of a sudden have a plague, right? Like, plagues build up. I don't know. I don't people. know what zombie movies you're watching, yeah. but uh, <laughs> it can happen pretty fast. Yeah, I guess, but I guess, you know, a locust attack, sure. But that, but like, things that, like, you they know, your poverty level has gotten too high, like, that implies, like, a buildup. Like, are you getting reports of those buildups? Then, you know, that's that's way different than I think what we, what you intentionally wanted from that system, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, I think having them be, like, things there. that yeah. immediately, that, that can pop up immediately out of nowhere, and they're like, oh, God, you have to deal with this right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, like that's exciting. Major, oh, mm -hmm. And it feels like Wear a major pigs. thing that's going to have, like, <laughs> Huge impact on you know, um, on your uh, on, on your heroes and on your on your research and on the corruption level and like all these things like like and and we really want to lean into this system and this will be the backbone of kind of like how we tell this story. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want to have a lot of cutscenes and dialogue and all that stuff. Um, like with our budget, we want to focus <coughs> all of that into into the tactics, into like the actual strategy layer and whatever, and not not spend a lot of money like on. VO and, and cutscenes mm -hmm. and animations and stuff. Like we want to have it be like, just in the actual game part of the game. We also want the game to be different when you play it the second. Yeah, time, you know? yeah, that's and the thing. Uh, if we if we put a bunch of story beats along the timeline that you just kind of have to like uh, run into and progress through, then it's like the game will be the same every time you play it. Whereas if we make a bunch of these events and they all have kind of like randomized outcomes, mm -hmm. I think it sh it should make the game a lot more replayable. I mean, we're calling them random events, but it's definitely a balance. Oh, you don't thing. have a mic. He's oh. oh. Yeah. yeah, we're calling them random events, but it's a balance thing, right? Like, you don't want the game to feel like randomly you just lost. Exactly. Right. So yeah, exactly. you got to figure out the right range. And that's the one that, the one that I always come back to, the, the, a really simple example, is the, um, the giant spider event from FTL. They have this event where... Oh, it was empty. Okay. Don't worry about it. Um, uh, the giant spider event in FDL. It's like a planet that's like overrun with giant spiders and it's like, oh, do you want to go, do you want to send your crew down to investigate it or not? Um, and so the outcomes, if you send somebody down, it's like either you're going to, what happens? You can get, <laughs> I forget I you can get a crew member or you can get a crew member can die. or you can lose a crew um, member. You can find And it's some, just totally yeah, random. But you can opt out of it altogether. You can just be like, dude, that's too dangerous. I can't, you know, I only have three crew members right now. I totally can't risk one. 
you know. So that one I think is really good where it's basically got, it's just like super simple risk reward. It's like you're presented with the event. You don't have to participate in it's it if you don't want to. Opportunity to gamble, yeah. Opportunity to gamble, yeah, which is cool. And I mean, they're not all like that. Like I don't think they all should be like that. Sometimes you have to make a choice and then something good or bad could happen based off of that. And you know, sometimes you yeah. have to gamble. Um, but I like that one where it gives you some control of just being like, like weighing the the gamble versus yeah. the if you're feeling the lucky super or not conservative route like yeah. is is totally cool like we don't I, want you reaching for the reload key you know right right um, want you to kind of feel feel like these things are interesting enough uh, and not damaging enough that you you can't survive through them you know yes. I think I think um, and that's where you know hero death is kind of a joke just it's the one thing we have in there right now but you're not going to be having heroes croak left and right from these things yep I forget did FTL have Safe, safe scum prevention at all, or was that was that Iron Maned out, or was I don't that? think that they did. I, don't I played think it. I played I it. I think that you could save scum Fairly. if you wanted, but you would have to go in and like copy save files. It was so fast, stuff. though. Yeah. yeah, and you didn't know going ahead of them, like if you have an account for the first time. Do we have any um, questions from the chat? Yeah, uh, one yeah. Keep I think talking. We're close to wrapping this. Sucker we are up. only one point five hours. That's pretty good for us. It's good amazing. For us. Uh, do, 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 <laughs> Watson27 says, do you want the community to make random events for us? That, you know what? We we're going to we're gonna. We've post. talked about it. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it. <laughs> I liked, what was his name, Henry? Yeah, Henry. I liked his. Yeah, his yeah, great. the Riot one? Yeah. yeah. It's cool. I think it's a, it feels appropriately epic that, like, yeah. oh, man. And it also ties into Ryan. what um, the conversation that you and Tim had regarding the Victory Garden. Yeah, that, that, was, that was something. I'll put that, that in, great in the post on the... Um, on the forums, mm -hmm. but yeah, I think it's it's an interesting idea of, of of thinking about these events, like treating the entire kingdom. This this is our one window into the non heroes, the of, daily life of, of the, the of the fiction. kingdom, you know. And we really want to reinforce that it's like, okay, yeah, it's like there's a whole war being fought, and there are a bunch of like commoners trying to go about their daily life, but they're also trying to contribute to the war effort war effort in like any way that they can. So Tim's suggestion was like when I, I talked to him about it, like yeah, like maybe. Like, I don't know how to make these things feel epic. Like, you don't want them to feel like, um, you know, just like weird They're breaking the game. Or They're making or breaking the game <clears throat> entirely. Like, yeah. you, don't want them to, you don't want to be going them, having them kill heroes or give you, like... Right, right. Yeah. And is there, is there a way to... Whatever. And he, he suggested, he's like, oh, like, you know, during World War II, there's, like, lots of, like, um, you know, the home front during the war... Like and Victory Gardens is the example that keeps popping up. Like, but there are lots of things that are more interesting than Victory Gardens. That That's going to be the, the iPad front. mini game that you have to play <laughs> <laughs> for your two screen yeah, experience. Yeah. Massive um, <laughs> Victory Garden. But uh, you know, really thinking about like, well, what are the, what are the commerce doing, and are there crazy things that could happen? Like, like the Victory Garden thing. I mean, even that you can make like a corruption explosion in a Victory Garden that <clears> like contaminates a bunch of food, and then you have to make a call about Fred, what's what is a Victory Garden. Oh, it was encouraged. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. You oh no, you you go. Oh, you people explain. were. Did you? Are you asking for the? Are you asking yeah, for, for your? Backers, yeah. Oh, for the backers. Well, Victory Gardens weren't the uh, populace encouraged to grow gardens in their backyards to conserve yeah, grow food. food. Yep. Yeah. You're going to be rationed. We don't know when you know supplies are going to be destroyed, bombed. I mean. And they had this big propaganda yeah. campaign. And there was a great garden. PBS show for decades about that. For, yeah, almost yeah, two decades called the Victory Garden. Oh yeah, it's awesome. It was really good. I, yeah, I taped it. But I guess I, guess, I think Tim's point was, you know, that is, it's your chance to see what's going on outside of the lives of your heroes, just going to fight battles, right. and you know, they're not always going to be like have a direct impact on your on the tactical game. They're just going to kind of tell you a story and then have some sort of in, you know, have some impact but nothing that's going to and they, I guess constantly they be breaking the game. They I don't guess. even have to all have a huge impact. Yeah, some yeah. of them can be little just choose your adventure stories if yeah. we if we want to write those that uh, that could be, you know, give you again that that cool fictional backdrop of what's happening in mm -hmm. this in this land. I'm also interested in the ones that are kind of a bit more uh, uh, you know, like soap opera e uh, stories about your heroes and their their families and their lives. Yeah. So those are kind of interesting too. Yeah. Well, so. yeah. This is the same system that's going to be used for like births and things like that. Right. We talked a lot about random events during births and the outcomes. So that to they that system, uh, that's a really good segue for to get back to this question. Uh, how the how differently comedy of this game be yeah. uh, if you comedy. run out of how, how the economy of the game? Oh, the economy. So, like, talk about system interplay because there's a few more questions coming in from the from the chat here. If you run out of money, will more of these events pop up? Will you just have to wait for pe for poor choices like in New XCOM? 
So one thing that we've discussed is uh, removing the economy altogether. Like the game is about time, and so using the research system, uh, we might be able to just remove economy from the game altogether. Have it all be about um, time what, and heroes. Time like and heroes are the, two, are, are the two big things in the those game. Those are your resources. So uh, time you and know, we're, we're still not sure exactly if it will work, but I'd like to lean into it. Um, so rather than hurting hurting your economy, quote unquote, would be. Um, using time, setting your research back by five years, mm -hmm. right? right? That would be a significant um, punch to your economy mm -hmm. gut. Time is, money, yeah. time is money, yeah. So and and it's really like the game's all about time, and so I think it would be really cool if we could just sort of ditch the the concept of just like gold because some of these things don't make sense when you're talking about gold, and I I don't know. So I I like that idea only because it's so many economies and so many games are just totally busted. Like, yeah. you know, XCOM actually did it pretty good. I was always, you know, kind of, you know, at, at or near no money and just getting enough stuff to get by. But so many other games just, it's, it's easy to game or it's, it's frustrating or it's, yep. if it's not balanced just right, um, everything falls apart, so. Uh, okay, great, couple more questions. Um, for these tasks, for these random events coming in, will there be a, a, a cabinet of members or, or a single person? Uh, for those who don't, aren't familiar with some of our previous discussions. Oh, so, so we're talking about yeah. the advisor, uh, the advisor character actually being the chalice. Um, so much like our logo with the two faces, it would be two characters, uh, so two voice characters that are talking to each other. Oh yeah, we can, go, we can totally go into, the, uh, go into the, key view, or the capital view. And so ignore the creepy old man standing <laughs> next to the chalice, but... Um, Jeff just made made the chalice really quickly and put it in the throne room. Cool, and it will be the kind of immortal object that is with you as the immortal ruler, and it will talk to you. Or really, I, I like the idea of them talking to each other because um, they can't really look at you, which is weird. Some concepts up on the blog, right? Yep, yep. I I did I put them on the blog? I hope I did. They're up there somewhere. Are they on the forums? Somebody can find them. But yeah. Like, like, and you might be able to ask them for advice about these these events. I and mean, they'd be kind of uh, posed as well. You know, like maybe one has a more risky personality, one has a more safe personality, and so kind of like in King of Dragon Pass, you have the council, and you get a, a, a you get advice over on each option from each of them. That um, you know, they would kind of at least point you in a direction. So just like you're talking about with the FTL, that uh, spider thing, like. Even though it didn't tell you what your percent chance was to succeed right, or whatever, right. you did have an idea of which is probably the more more risky decision. Yep. And and we want you know I think if we don't give you like hard evidence of what your your chances of success are, then at least building it such that you have some hints uh, towards like okay this is going to be relatively safe, this is going to be risky, or they're both risky. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, so that's cool. I'm excited about that. And then also, uh, we don't have this in yet, but you're get, some of the events you're going to be able to pick a hero to do them. Uh, so it might be like, oh, you need a hero from this house to do this, or we need a caber jack to come and do blah, or um, just, you know, any of your heroes that are available can go off and pursue this thing. So you're actually going to be able to select the hero, and then the rest of the event will follow based on their stats and what's going on with them. Every time that advisor character comes up. Yeah. Jeff immediately chimes into the channel. He's like, that took me five minutes, is one thing he says, or oh, <laughs> that's so bad, that's just temporary. Don't look at it. It's pretty great. So the, the final question uh, comes to us from Esprit de Corpse, which I think is an awesome name still. Uh, will you include an Iron Man mode for those who haven't uh, seen this discussion before? Yes. We will include an Iron Man Because he mode. says, because that's the only way to play this game. Oh, man. I, you know what? I don't want to judge anyone who takes the coward's way out. You know? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Like, I, I actually really like having uh, both the difficulty slider and the Iron Man checkbox. I think the interplay between them is really awesome because playing an easier difficulty on Iron Man pr produces a different kind of experience than playing the hardest difficulty on non-Iron Man. Like, they're, they're, they're unique experiences. So I think supporting both is, like, not super, super difficult for us. We're going to support both. Um, Tuning, I mean, tuning is difficult, right? It's like finding the right knobs for tuning the difficulty. Is yeah, really difficulty hard. is the tricky part. But, but the Iron Man Iron one is, is purely a technical problem, and I don't think it's you so bad. After every turn. And then you know, it's like some people will save scum it, and like <clears> that's fine. You know, if you can sleep, if you can sleep at night playing <laughs> Iron Man and uh, and and save scumming it, then all right. But you know, you can take we're it. not going to make it easy to do. You but, can take it like an know. Iron person. 
I heard the losses. There was a really cool uh, research thing done at Carnegie Mellon that uh, they actually, scientists found that every time someone saves gums, a kitten actually dies. It's true. <laughs> it's it true. actually yeah. destroys. Yeah. It takes animals. life force from a child oh, man. and a kitten. But yeah, we want to have both. We want to have both. Cool. Is that it? I think That's we're all done. It. I think we're done. We're forking it. One hour, 31 minutes. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks, Chad. And thanks, Dan. Thank for you, guys. Us. Appreciate this it, guys. This was fun on the couch. And, um, Thank you guys for backing and yeah. watching. Yeah, thanks for backing the game. Have an awesome for Halloween coming up tuning into here. this thing. And we'll be back in a couple more weeks yeah. with Team Stream 10. Um, so we do have, if you're in San Francisco, um, Day of the Devs on November 2nd. So that will happen before our next Team Stream. So um, if you're in San Francisco, it's going to be a free event. You can go to the dayofthedevs.com or Double Fine's website, get more info on that. It's going to be crowded. Um, I think it's, it's going to be amazing. really rad. There's like, like 1,200 people signed up on, yeah? on the Facebook it's, page. It's going to be yeah. fantastic. Um, it's at, what club is it at? Oh, is Jesus. Slow club? Go to dayofthedevs.com. No, it's, uh, it's not the slow club. It's no, not the slow club. It's like some... Oh, man. Uh, what's it called? I have, I look it up, said, Day of the Devs. Just go to dayofthedevs.com. Yeah. Are you going to go there? It's going to be super fun. I can't go. I think it's going to be really fantastic. Dan it's, will not be there, well, so if you're worried about running into I him. I so wanted to. I was so excited. Because um. my dad's in town from the East Coast. And I was, it's public, public works. works. Public that, works. And it was, it was at 3 in the afternoon, but I, my, I want to bring my kids, but it's 21 and over. Yeah. Yeah. Might 21 and over. Outside. Yeah. I Put be beards on them. Outside. They'll get in. Yeah, maybe. A little, little sticky beard. So, um, David Evans, you'll be able to play uh, Broken Age. You'll be able to play Space Base. Uh, Transistor from Oh yeah, uh, Transistor. Transistor. Bunch a bunch of other devs are are be there. Yeah, below there. what lies it's, below. It's going to be Freaking super great. rad. Uh, you should come. Wait, what other? That's DFs? it. I'll be there. Uh, Massive Chalice will not be there. Massive Chalice won't be uh, there. <laughs> maybe <ne> <laughs> this is successful. Maybe next year. Maybe next space. year. Yeah. Um, maybe the poster you can buy there. Massive Chalice. Perfect. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't oh. know if we have any. There's some merch there. We do. We might be making some more as well for it. So, okay. So hopefully we'll see you there. If not, see you next team stream. Um, Brad, how else can they find information about Massive Chalice? Oh, you can totally go to massivechalice.com. Awesome. Um, the blog is our good output. If you, what yeah. if you have strong opinions about something, they really want to have a discussion about You can about totally it. come to the forums and talk about awesome. it. Awesome. I'd really, you know, we were talking about those random events. Really want to start a great that thread about random events. That's a really uh, good idea. Getting people's ideas about, like, yeah. you know, what they think the, the proper tone and, like, epicness uh, of those things should be. That'll be awesome. What I'll kind of things those. happen in, in a land under siege, you know, in wartime? Yeah. Um, not in the movie Under Siege, but, you know... <laughs> Like or maybe, maybe, maybe you need a masterpiece just kicks under some siege? major ass and you have to respond to that I event. I totally love it. Uh, so okay, I think we're I think we're out. Have a good Halloween and uh, we'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. Thanks guys. Later.